sadly, the harsh reality is that anyone connected to the internet is a potential victim. It's proven to be a successful business model for would-be cyber criminals. The, the, the proliferation and, and overall advancement of the threat itself, combined with the ease of access to these toolkits, and even the development of ransomware customer service agencies, believe it or not, that actually assist victims in uh, walking them through the process of attaining Bitcoin to even pay their own ransom. Seen a se severe evolution from what was a 10 five, 10 years ago was a simple annoyance that maybe the largest, uh, most common ransom payment was for probably less than $300. Uh, and now we are seeing a multi-billion dollar international criminal undertaking with you know some of these uh, ransoms being in the tens of millions of dollars. So it, it's a definite increase in, in growth. And it's simply the, due to the proliferation. I think the biggest single impact is what it's allowed it to proliferate as much is the advancement of cryptocurrencies. Uh, the, the way to make payments that are totally anonymized, untraceable uh, for the most part. Um, and uh, that, that has is what has facilitated the widespread adoption of ransomware by criminals. Well, one of the larger ones that comes to mind that had such a, a prevalence uh, several years ago was WannaCry. Uh, that was uh, something that exploited a, a Windows server message block uh, vulnerability and spread like wildfire throughout the internet. Mm -hmm. There are, are others like uh, Tesla Crypt. This is a, uh, another vulnerability uh, exploit that uh, utilized a browser exploitation kits to distribute malware across particular systems. But they ultimately released a master decryption key and closed their doors. Um, not Petya is another one, uh, more of an infrastructure focused to utilities and uh, um, you know oil and gas power uh, grids, those kind of components. Uh, that was where, it, that was the attack was focused. It was discovered in Ukraine and plagued a lot of Europe. Revil is something that it's a more or less a ransomware group in addition to a type of ransomware, uh, but ultimately made the headlines that they were responsible for the colonial pipeline attack that shut down oil processing on the East Coast for several days. Um, another one, uh, Sam Sam, uh, more of a, a targeted campaign uh, used against entities who whose access to data is extensively critical, like hospitals or even potential schools, uh, and may those individuals, those organizations may not necessarily have the IT security budgets to to have. Uh, uh, rapid response capability in place. Social engineering is actively underway. Um, and the, some of the largest breaches that have occurred have not occurred as a result of some vulnerability in the software or hardware components that was exploited that gave someone unauthorized access. A lot of the largest attacks of, as of late as a, have occurred with legitimate credentials being obtained. Um, now, unfortunately, legitimate credentials, if there's not some other multi-factor authentication form in place, then those legitimate credentials give unfettered access to the system and can do so for you know, an indefinite period of time until the organization is able to determine that they've even had a breach. Um, so there, there's, there's multiple factors involved in the process. Sadly, a lot of organizations have kind of <laughs> restrictions when it comes to their overall strategy. They, they can do things quick, they can do things cheap, or they can do things securely. And sadly, the last leg is also often the first thing on the chopping block because they want their capabilities out yesterday and at as minimal overhead cost as possible. It's difficult also when it comes to investment in security capabilities and responses if you're not able to see an immediate uh, return on your investment, it's hard to justify that initial expense, at least when it comes to, uh, you know, the board of particular organizations. So the without understanding the threat, it's difficult to understand the need and requirement for the investment behind it. The reason why most security, cybersecurity incidents occur is because we are a reactionary society. Traditionally, sadly, we wait for bad crap to happen and then decide, okay, we should probably do something to prevent that after we've already suffered from it. Many organizations seem to see themselves as small fish and not a primary target, but any mom and pop shop uh, can be uh, targeted for a ransomware attack. Um, the doctor's offices, um, you know, sm smaller, uh, smaller entities, smaller organizations, small, smaller businesses that have, uh, don't necessarily have the resources to throw at an IT uh, department or even a, a security division. Um, it, it, so if you're, if you're dealing, say you're in, if you're dealing with uh, with 
confidential patient information, like in a, like in a hospital or, or a, a specialized doctor's office, if that information becomes leaked, you've <laughs> you, you, in addition to major HIPAA violations and fines, you'd be lucky to continue to survive operating uh, after all that time. Um, so there, there are there are considerable uh, reasons to take this into uh, evaluation when it comes to strategy. But sadly, most organizations wait, and it's unfortunate that they wait until they're hit to actually say, "Oh, let's let's develop some strategy to, to prevent this from occurring in the future." Well, the U.S. Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA, uh, provided an official ransomware guide to assist organizations with their respective mitigation efforts. Uh, this guidance ultimately outlines the importance of being prepared for such an attack. And, and part of this preparation should be the establishment of a comprehensive data lifecycle management strategy. Uh, it's one of the strongest countermeasures against the ransomware. Um, being able to ultimately understand the secure creation, storage, transfer, and destruction of data uh, and, and all, in all steps of that life cycle. Organizations need to securely encrypt and back up the, the gold images, if you will, of their critical operational data and have that backup offline in order to mitigate any potential exposure so that if the data is encrypted or it is because it does become uh, unavailable or denied via ransomware, you have access to the data in an offline format that could be easily uh, replace the encrypted and unusable data. As part of this, you need to regularly verify uh, and update the gold images of your critical information to make sure that it's available uh, when necessary to for, for system restoral should it require complete rebuilding. The CISA also outlines the importance of being prepared for an attack by actively planning for one by developing a cyber incident response plan. Then this can be integrated into uh, business continuity or disaster recovery plans. Uh, CISA further highlighted some of the general best practices uh, to help reduce the opportunities for compromise. And, and these include conducting regular audits uh, that, that help to discover any security gaps that ultimately need addressing. Um, the CISA has also released a ransomware readiness assessment module for its cybersecurity evaluation tool. Um, the RRA is a self-assessment security tool that any organization can utilize to gain further insights into how prepared uh, and ready they are uh, to handle uh, a cyber attack and how prepared their cyber defenses are. Uh, any substantive protection and response efforts against the threat of ransomware must involve developing a comprehensive assessment of your own organization's security posture. Um, as each individual organization is likely to have unique security requirements, priorities, risk tolerances, uh, it's essential that each an entity develop a customized response plan to fit their own unique needs. Uh, this can also include uh, you know, purchasing uh, offline equipment that can rapidly be or rapidly be used to replace infected equipment that uh, has been mitigated or has been infected uh, and threatened via a ransomware attack. Uh, you actually to have clean equipment that can easily replace quickly uh, and be populated with the gold image information that's necessary for business continuity. Uh, that's some of the uh, basic digital diligence efforts that can be taken. Ultimately, the being prepared that you cannot, I cannot emphasize this enough, sadly, uh, or I don't know how to drill this into ind individual organizations heads to specify the need to have a plan in place because the best time to develop a ransomware plan is not in the middle of an attack. It's prior to getting struck by one. Um, and if you are, you know, if you're, if you're dealing with a ransomware attack, and yet you have no outline guidelines, no outline protocols, no rules, regulations to follow. You don't know necessarily where the, the uh, um, jurisdiction from one individual's responsibilities and roles uh, fall and, and where yours begin. That is only going to feed into the chaos that's generated from the immediate lack of, of access. So it, it's, it is a complex and challenging situation that, that no longer can be taken lightly.